I have bought 10 of the coolest PlayStation accessories that don't break the bank with cheap and reasonable price ranges as low as $5 and a few higher items as well. These will all be a great addition to your gaming setup and will definitely help you level things up. So let's first start with probably the simplest accessory that will allow you to customize this area on your PlayStation. So these little logos here cost around $10 and you get like a huge selection of them. And if you remove the PlayStation console covers, you'll be able to change the color of the logo right here. This helps level up the overall aesthetics of your PlayStation console without having to do any crazy modifications. So you can see with this one that I prepared earlier with my black console covers that I have got the original PlayStation logo in the top left corner and it looks unreal. It just adds a bit of like contrast and uh, definition to the overall PS5. Now the way you fit these are incredibly simple. What you want to do is you want to go ahead and just remove the console cover and then in the top corner there'll be this area here that's blanked off and then you can just choose from whichever sticker that you want and place it within here. Now there are also some RGB variations of these stickers that light up and you can sort of plug into like a USB port and things like that. Those are quite cool, they're around sort of $15. Uh, but these are the easiest ones that don't require any crazy cables to be sticking out the back of your console that looks a little bit untidy. I think I'm going to go ahead and choose this red sticker here. I've already used the original PlayStation logo which is by far the coolest one but we'll pop this one in place and then you can pop your console, console cover back on. And then you can see the impact that that has. It adds just a little splash of color to what could be a kind of boring PlayStation aesthetic. Next up, I have got a fake PlayStation controller that only cost me $20. I'll leave a link to this down below in the video description and also all the other products that I mentioned in this video because this one in particular, you may want to actually check it out. So instead of it being called the DualShock 4, it's called the DoubleShock 4, which is absolutely hilarious. But the controller itself is, is this one right here, and you would believe that it was a real one. It's almost identical. So if you compare this to a real genuine PS4 controller, the overall shape of them, everything's the same. The thumbsticks match pretty much almost identical. You've got the official uh, PlayStation buttons with the X square circle and so on, all matching there. You have the touchpad. We even have a place to plug your microphone in, the same ports. And then on the back, you've even got the light bar, and it even lights up. So when you turn this controller on, the light bar actually illuminates and, and responds with the games. And also, this does have rumble. At first I thought, well maybe, you know, it might not have rumble effects or something. It seemed too good to be true. But when I plugged it in and started gaming with it, rumble effects are just equally as strong as on this one. And to complete the entire package, the internal speaker also worked. If anything, it was louder on this PS4 controller, the fake one, it was super loud. When we flip them over to the side as well, the triggers, match almost identical. Maybe these ones feel a little bit better, a bit more premium. Plastic on here maybe feels a, like a slightly different compound of plastic, but other than that, like you could use this easy peasy as like your main PS4 controller and at least buy it as a secondary one so you can play with your mates like FIFA or something when you're playing split screen if some mates come around and you're having a party. You know, at least you've got some spare controllers without dropping like $60 on a real one. So it's a, it's a pretty decent strong option. I'll, I'll leave a link below. While we're on the topic of controllers, I found this in insane, like insane uh, PlayStation pillow. Uh, look at it, I don't even need to describe what it is. Just look at how cool that is. This was $18 and it's a huge PS4 pillow. It's insane. Now you can also buy a version of this for the Xbox, which I already have and this will be going right next to it, but this is obviously for your PlayStation fans. Now this is an officially licensed PlayStation product that I purchased off the PlayStation Store. Leave a link in the description. And it just looks unbelievable. So cool, uh, so, so cool. I just love how it looks. Like, look at that. <laughs> this is so impressive. Pillows like this just help add vibe to your overall gaming setup, especially if you're like a PlayStation fanboy, you can throw this in your setup. Or if you're like me and play on both, you can have the Xbox One and also the PlayStation One next to each other and it, it makes your sofa just look a bit cooler. It's also super duper soft. The material on this thing is unbelievable. And then the padding on the pillow is also very reasonable. Now for a quick moment, let's actually switch our focus away from controllers. I've got some other controller accessories that I want to show you later on in the video. But now let's have a look at some head Phone. In my Xbox version of this video, I recommended the Astro A10s as a brilliant wired gaming headset that you could use on any console. They work on pretty much every single console you may wish to use them with. And those are still obviously a great recommendation if you are a PlayStation player, but to switch things up so I'm not recommending the same products, I actually found this wireless headset from Logitech, the G535. 
Now you're going to think I'm absolutely mad when I say this, but I purchased these for like 55 pounds, which is roughly $60. And usually they go for around $100. I have no idea why they were so cheap, but like I got them super cheap. I got a screenshot to prove that that was the price. Because honestly, what often happens in these videos is I purchase things on the internet for like a cheap price, and then the prices change by the times I make the video. And everyone's like, whoa, those are like $100. Why'd you recommend that cheap thing? So I've got a screenshot this time to prove that that's how much they were when I bought them. So here we go. These are wireless. As you can see, they have 33 hours of charge, which is quite sick. So considering that they're like around $10 more than the Astro versions I recommended in the last video, which was obviously a wired headset, if you can get them for a decent price, then we may as well get these bad boys. Yeah, and they're even brand new as well. I thought maybe like, uh, the, the price seemed too good to be true. I thought they may be Amazon renewed or something, but look, they're brand new. Got the tab and everything to tear away, bang. Wow, they're really lightweight. I like those. Oh, look at how cool that a headband is. Like Fortnite vibes, isn't it? That's like, sort of like purple and blue. Oh, they're really comfortable. The way they hook over your ears is insane. Now, the main advantage of going for the Astro A10s over the G535s, uh, how do you even say? Is it G, G5, G535, G535? G53-5s? I always get confused with Logitech names as them. Anyways, the Astro A10s have incredible adjustability, especially if you have a much smaller head. The way those headphones sort of pull in and out is, is insane. You can get them really small. So if you're, you're much younger, you're one of my sort of, the, like the younger teenager guys that watch some of my videos, it'll fit your head much better because of how small they are. But uh, this is much better if you're sort of like a young adult, I'd say, because the fitting on this, see, see it's much smaller actual adjustments that you have, but that's because of the way the headband's designed. You can sort of switch that headband and the positioning of that. So the G535s also have some other cool features to be aware of, such as the auto mic muting. So basically, when you're using the headphones, if you flip the microphone up, it will automatically mute it. I can't express how awesome this is. I had this on a gaming headset like years ago, and you'd be playing away and you could just quickly flip the microphone up and it would mute. And the cool thing about the Logitech headphones are it makes like a little beepy noise. When you flip them up, it goes doobaloo. Like, so you know that it is 100% muted. Because it saves you a lot of embarrassment when somebody comes in your room saying you've been playing games for way too long, you can just literally flip the microphone up so your mates can't hear you getting told off by your parents or, or someone who lives with you. Next, let's take a look at a few different console stands that you can purchase for your PS5. Now, I'm not really a huge fan of like console stands. I, I feel like they have their place within a setup. But also as well, they can look a little bit cluttered. Sometimes you know, if you don't get the right ones, they can look a little bit cheap. Now I found an interesting one if you've especially got like a PSVR 2 headset. This might be quite useful for just getting it out of the way uh, and up out of the way, like you can sort of throw the headset up off of you know, like the, the side table or off the floor so you can get it in a safe place. Now this also offers an element of cooling, which again, like I just find that always unnecessary. They love a bit of cooling in these like cheap Chinese uh, as stands, but this one in particular has some really cool features regarding like wireless charging. So inside of this packaging is this little titchy, almost USB type C magnet. So basically what you do is you take this little USB type C magnet and you plug it into the back of your controller or your PSVR2 controllers. And then this acts as a charging point. So then you can throw the controller straight into the mount point and it will charge, like it will basically dock in and then it'll go ahead and do its charging process. Now, the cool thing about this stand in particular are the colored LEDs on the front. These will change color basically depending on the charge rate. So it would be red if it isn't fully charged. And then if it becomes fully charged, these lights will then illuminate green. So, you know, you can take it off and start playing. So if we fit this with my PS5 all disc edition, you will literally just go ahead and mount it in place like that, super easy. And then you'll power the stand itself with these two USB cables at the back. So these will just literally occupy both of the ports on your PS5 at the rear. And that will power the stupid fan and then obviously the charging ports as well. Now, thankfully, you don't lose these USB ports because at the front of the stand, you do have a, like a USB hub, which gives you two USB type A's and also a USB type C. So you have plenty of places to obviously plug in things like your PSVR 2 or, you know, some other accessories such as your like steering wheels or whatever you may require to also use on your console. But the cool features of this stand don't end there because included is also basically like a hook mechanism for putting your PSVR 2 headset onto it. So that too also packs away nice and neat with your console. So you can throw that in here 
and then you've got a place to hang the headset off, run the cable down, and it can be all packed away nice and neat when you're not using it. And then also you can charge the controllers here. To give credit to this stand out of all of the ones that I came across on Amazon, it is by far probably the most useful one because of the integration with the charging docks and the PSVR 2. Now this stand right here does cost around $33, which I didn't think was too bad. But if you wanted something a little bit cheaper, i.e. you didn't need the stupid cooling fan and all that type of stuff, this alternative here is around sort of $25. $28, $28, and it's specifically designed for the PSVR 2, so it gives you a place to dock and charge it with a cool screen to tell you, you know, basically the battery levels, and also it's got this cool RGB light strip at the bottom, which uh, gives it a wow factor. <laughs> this next accessory is for the PS4 players, and it helps you level up your controller, especially if you play maybe a lot of FPS shooters, and you want some back paddles that you can use. So this controller attachment is officially made by Sony. It was Sony's attempt at sort of competing with Xbox's uh, Series Elite controllers that have all of the back buttons and pro features. And essentially, it's just an attachment that clicks into place on your regular DualSense controller, but adds two rear button paddles that you could obviously use for, you know, sliding, reloading, jumping, whatever you wanted to do in a particular shooting game or whatever. So the way that you attach it is just by plugging it into the front of the controller where you would connect your headset. Now, don't worry if you have a wired headset because you do still have a headphone port in the front of this controller mod. And it's that straightforward. You now have two rear back paddles on your DualShock controller. Next, I want to show you a really cool RGB mod that you can add to your PS5. Now, what you may have noticed earlier when we remove these console covers is that I had this sort of strip of light around these corners here running to a USB port. Now, these cost around $20 and they look insane. These are so easy to fit. You just remove your console covers, stick them to the inner of your PS5, put your console covers back on and then plug the USB stick back into the console to power them. And then you have a little controller provided in the box that let, lets you change all of the settings and the colors and so on. And it adds incredible lighting effects to your PlayStation console. As you can see here, the final results are very impressive. Now there are also some other variations of these from dbrand, which I have in this box right here. I purchased some stuff from dbrand that I'm gonna be showing you in a different PlayStation video. So be sure to subscribe for that one so you don't miss it because it's gonna be pretty cool some of the things we're going to modify. The ones from dbrand are more like tube RGB lights rather than these strip lights. So I'm hoping the effect might be quite different Next, let's take a look at two options for storing your PS5 controllers out of the way. First one's this cheap one that costs around $15, and these are multi-purpose. You can use them in two different ways. So the first way of using them is as wall mounts. So you've got two little holes here that you can basically attach this bracket onto your wall and then have your PS5 controllers or, or even PS4 controllers with this one sort of hovering in mid-air. The other way that requires less DIY is by hooking them with this attachment. You see, I've got this little hook point onto the PS5 console itself. So they hook on just like that. And then you can grab your PS5 controller and just hang it there, which looks quite clean. I actually quite like it. And obviously for your $16, you do get two of these and also the uh, mounting screws and things that you require if you were to go down the wall mount mounting route. But a little bit more of a pricier option that also provides a bit of charging is this one here. This costs around $28, $30 ish. And it actually looks quite good. Like it looks like an official PlayStation product. The packaging on it's pretty tidy. So this is a much more subtle PS4 controller charger compared to obviously the, the big stands we've been looking at. So this just could go on a shelf nice and easily. It's just powered by a type C. So you could throw that into your console itself. Comes with the cable. And then instead of charging the cons uh, controllers via this port, it actually charges them via the microphone jack. Now, by far my favorite thing about this controller dock is how clean it is. It's not got any like branding on it. There's no random like Chinese brands anywhere. So it just looks super minimalistic and like it could be an official Sony product and you'd never know pretty good. And now onto our final product, which will cost you $22. And that is the PlayStation official bedding. Now, after a super long day of gaming, whether that be with the PSVR 2 or a hardcore pro gaming session in something like Call of Duty, to obviously match and go with your awesome PlayStation controller pillow, you want somewhere to go to sleep. Now, in the past, we looked at Xbox's version of the style of bed sheets, and they had some absolutely hilarious pillowcases. But the Sony ones are a little bit more subtle with a nice clean blue blue design and just some simple PlayStation logos here and there. And one thing in particular that's very nice about these official PlayStation ones are the reversible designs. So it's two-sided, the bed sheets. You've got two different patterns that you can choose from depending on what your style's like. These were some of the cheapest accessories that you can buy for your PlayStation. But if you want to see me unbox some of the coolest, you should check out this video next.